In one corner, we have an action RPG where the protagonist uses magic and brute strength to slay gods and monsters in a mystical land. In the other corner, we have the same thing. On December 8th, 2022, two mammoth tales of epic proportions go face to face for the most coveted prize in all of gaming. But today, we pit Elden Ring versus God of War Ragnarok in an objective perspective. I'm Lee to the Gamer, and welcome to another episode of Objective Perspective, where we'll take an objective look at video games. My personal preferences or opinion do not matter. This will not be a fanboy love letter to games that I cherish, and from time to time, we'll even take a look at games that I'm not personally incredibly fond of, but can clearly see its merits. Today, we compare Elden Ring and God of War Ragnarok, the two games most likely to win the coveted Game of the Year award at the Game Awards on December 8th, 2022. We'll be taking a look at their storytelling, gameplay, difficulty, and art direction to make a prediction on who will win. But before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. We're a small channel, but we're growing strong. And without further ado, welcome to the lands between. Your goal become the Elden Lord. There will be no hand-holding, no simple exposition, no easy mode, no guide. Any questions you have about the lands between and your purpose will only be answered by your own curiosity and perception. Everything is a threat. You will die, and every death will become a success earned through sacrifice while every endeavor will only become more difficult. In short, Elden Ring is f hard, but within its difficulty, you are rewarded with a true sense of accomplishment. Elden Ring doesn't spend much time expositing the story and simply gives you a to-do list. How you interpret your instructions depends on who you interact with, where you explore, and what you decide to do with the information you acquire. Will you stick to the task at hand and follow the path dictated by the greater will, or will you learn about your surroundings and side with those seeking a change from the cycle? Elden Ring's strongest storytelling tool is your own desire to learn. To stand before the Elden Ring. and become the Elden Lord. Welcome back to Midgard. Your actions in the last game have sparked Fimble Winter, the prophesied endless winter that leads to Ragnarok, the end of the world as you know it. God of War Ragnarok puts you on the shoulder of the protagonist as they move through the Nine Realms. You always receive enough information to understand where you will be going, what you will be doing, and why. But as the main cast try to manage their trauma, you begin to become overwhelmed by their diverging interests and expectations, blurring your own direction. But this is done purposely. Relying on what you see and what you hear at face value is only half of the story. The random facts you'll learn, the lore you'll read, historical artifacts and locations you'll find, and the fables told of people long lost to the past is a distraction to set you up for the game's greatest plot twist. God of War uses traditional storytelling that intentionally does not include the finer details, because unless a character was at the event, what they say cannot be trusted. No one is a reliable narrator. Ignoring that fact lulls you into a false sense of direction, while the protagonist believes that everything they are doing is to prevent the outcome that you are looking for. Again, he misses the point. <laughs> Focusing on the second act to the exclusion of the final. A common mistake in storycraft. We are yeah, leaving. leaving. Elden Ring's gameplay is like a choose-your-own-adventure book. There are 10 classes to choose from and 31 weapon types. Where you take your character is only limited by your exploration and the stats you choose to upgrade. You can wield a sword and shield, wield weapons in each hand, or wield one weapon with both hands. What you have in your hands will determine the abilities and magic you can use, and dual wielding weapons of the same type provide attack synergy. But that's just the basics. There are four physical damage types, four elemental damage types, status effects like blood loss, poison, and rot, 
incantations, weapon skills, weapon affinities, armor affinities, summons, weight restraints. Saying that there's a lot of choices is an understatement. Like other FromSoft games, the enemies you fight are all lessons. The gameplay loop in Elden Ring is dying, learning from your mistakes, then learning how to capitalize. To beat this game, you have to master spacing, dodging, parrying, reading your enemy, and knowing when the battle isn't a necessity. A new player will grind sections for hours to get strong enough to pass through a certain area, while a seasoned player will run buck naked into pits of fire, running past enemies to get to their goal. Elden Ring seems as though it has no expectation of the player completing it. Encounters begin as tough but manageable, and as the game continues, regular enemies become so powerful that fighting everything you come across is counterproductive. When you die, you lose your runes, the same currency used to raise your stats and buy items. So the further into the game you go, the harder the enemies, the more runes it'll cost you to level up, and the needless death set you back by preventing you from becoming overleveled. The bosses in Elden Ring are imaginative in design. They have tells and attack combos that can be mixed and matched with their other attacks. For instance, one could begin with what you've seen as a 5 hit combo, but stagger the 4th and 5th hit. Or use the first 2 attacks, then link directly into a different combination or skills. Their AI makes them appear to be constantly thinking and adjusting their strategy based on your actions. And speaking of bosses, there are a total of 165 of them, although there are many duplicates. The more you explore, the more equipment you'll find, the more enemies you'll meet, the more experience with combat you'll gain, and the stronger your strategy will become. In contrast, God of War Ragnarok's gameplay is nearly identical to the first game. This time around, Kratos wields four main weapons, the Leviathan Axe, the Blades of Chaos, the Drop Near Spear, and the Shield. For the first time, Atreus is a playable character with his own skill tree. The two playstyles are vastly different. Atreus is faster than Kratos, he is relegated to one primary weapon, his bow and arrow, but his movements are so fluid Aloy would be jealous. Instead of leveling through fighting, your experience rewards weapon skills, while exploration rewards ways to upgrade those weapons, as well as unique armor and abilities that cannot be acquired in the main quest. Ragnarok convinces you to go off the beaten path with difficulty spikes that will leave you under leveled. If a section is too difficult, it's probably time to do some side quests and acquire some new loot. Your weapons and armor have perks attached to them that synergize with each other, the runic abilities on your weapons, the relics you acquire, the enchantments attached to your amulet, the weapon skills you learn, the skills your partner has equipped, and the abilities that they acquire. This leads tons of customization for whatever playstyle you want to approach the game with. One thing you cannot do is sneak. In the majority of the game, you are locked into a fight with the enemies you come across. But to the game's credit, once an enemy is defeated, more don't replace them in most cases. Your impact on the environment can be felt by not being forced to face troves and troves of enemies over and over again if you already cleared the area of a threat. Speaking of environment, God of War Ragnarok does what its predecessors have done since the first game, making exploration a puzzle, almost like a Metroidvania. If an area is unreachable, you're either missing an item needed to progress, haven't completed a side mission, or haven't noticed a fork in the path that will eventually lead you to where you want to go. Bosses in this game have excellent design and can be quite difficult, but the variety and scale is lacking compared to Elden Ring. But Ragnarok is also a game that wants you to complete it. It wants you to know the story of Kratos and Atreus at Ragnarok. The difficulty can be lowered to story mode or pumped up to the Give Me God of War difficulty that fills on par with Elden Ring's standard difficulty. Elden Ring can be described as treacherously beautiful. One open world environment effortlessly transitions smoothly into its polar opposite. Every location is a sight to behold, and every location visually tells you its own story and history at a glance. The local enemies are tools used to solidify each zone's own personality. There's a dark twisted beauty to everywhere you go and everyone you meet. As Elden Ring's story is told through investigation of its surroundings, area design and character design are methods used to convey the legend and chronicles of the lands between. God of War Ragnarok is functionally beautiful. Each realm is unique, and each zone within each realm was envisioned as part of a world that lived and breathed on its own. Colors are vibrant and hide artifacts, lore, and branching pathways in plain sight. Visiting compensates you with gorgeous, detailed environments, and you are further rewarded for taking a closer look at the details. God of War Ragnarok's story is straightforward, but its surroundings and area design expound on the fables told in this game and the previous one.
If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I spent approximately the same amount of time playing both these games, so making this prediction is difficult as I enjoyed both of them. There are stark differences between these two action RPGs, and their differences are their strengths. But before we get to the verdict, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell. When it comes to storytelling, Elden Ring puts a lot of effort into telling its tale, but it also takes a lot of effort to decipher it. It's an amazing story, but it's not accessible to everyone. God of War Ragnarok spends a lot of time telling you the story. It's a great story, but it also feels anticlimactic. For this reason, Elden Ring just edges out Ragnarok in the storytelling department. There are a lot of similarities in gameplay despite the scale of Elden Ring's modifiers being huge by comparison. Ragnarok is more focused on the task at hand and requires less planning to continue playing at the highest levels. If you're new to Elden Ring and make a mistake building your character, in many cases, it's time to hit the reset button. God of War Ragnarok allows for errors without having to scrap your Kratos. The world you play in is also more straightforward as you are in Kratos' shoes and not the shoes of your own creation. While I would say Ragnarok has better gameplay, the bosses and monsters you face are not nearly on the scale of Elden Ring. Everything is bigger in Elden Ring. It's just not accessible to those that don't know where to look. For that, I'd say it's a tie. Finally, the art direction of each game, God of War Ragnarok had some beautiful locations, but it also had some very visually mediocre locations. The self-contained puzzles within each world were fun to figure out, but there wasn't an air of mystery. Elden Ring's design, use of colors, characters, and personality made every new area explored feel dangerous and unknown. There were no locations or bosses that felt generic until they were overused, and that's just an amazing feat for a game of its size. In the end though, Elden Ring was just more visually engaging than Ragnarok. It makes sense. One game is telling a story, while the other game is a story you tell. Final verdict. At the Game Awards 2022, in no small feat, Elden Ring will take the Game of the Year award. Believe me when I say this, I was personally rooting for God of War Ragnarok. I mean, my son's name is Atreus. I love the series. But when all the cards are dealt, Elden Ring has some huge advantages over Ragnarok. Its combat is deeper and more customizable, its main bosses are unique, bigger, and tougher, and the game's environment is more than just a set piece for the actions to take place. But what do I know? I'm just some guy on the internet. I'm late to the gamer. This was an objective perspective. For more reviews, rants, gameplay footage, and live streams, hit that like button and subscribe to Console Control. And thank you for watching.